Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, July 7th, 7.45 a.m. my time. Prices of Bitcoin currently at 34800 and some change. Looks like we made some very nice movement overnight. Once again, coming back to the monthly open, which we tagged just yesterday and got sharply rejected, but looks like we formed a base right here, pushed back towards this monthly open marker. Now, the interesting thing is, when we open the weekly right here, as you can see, there was really no wick that pushed to the upside and then dropped. All we really did was as soon as we opened, I mean, we just nuked, right? So I'm thinking that the market might go clean up this weekly open area, okay, and give it a wick because here's how that candle looks right now, okay? <clears throat> as you can see right here, no wick, right? And then Bitcoin rarely puts on a, a candle, whether it's on a large time frame like daily, weekly, or monthly, where it has a candle with basically no wick. Like if you look across the board, I don't see any candles really that have zero wicks, right? Maybe this one right here to the bottom side, but let's see, right? Open is 7350, lowest 7341. So it did press down about like eight or nine dollars and then took off. Okay. But the point is, you know, this one, I mean, right out the gate, it just started getting sold off. So I'm thinking from a technical perspective, something that I've typically recognized in markets is, you know, first of all, if you're seeing this kind of momentum up, well, you just have to focus on where's the next big target. Well, I'd focus on the weekly open right here. Okay. So just something to keep in mind. Um, if you are thinking about going to the long side, all right. Now, the one thing that I do want to discuss is, over the last several days, you know what? The one thing that we've seen is assets like SNX, like Compound, they have taken off tremendously, right? And this probably has a lot of people excited because they're thinking that, well, what if this is the beginning of a new bull market? What if I miss the bottom? And what if I'm not going to get a chance to buy the bottom? Whatever your thought process is. My word of advice to you is to just be patient, okay? Especially on assets like Compound SNX, if you were really a big fan of them, then you got to ask yourself is, was there a reason why I didn't buy down here? And why am I getting excited up here? Is it simply because the prices ran up a lot? Or is it really that you really wanted to buy down here, but you missed the chance? More often than not, the answer to most people is, well, I'm only getting excited because everybody else is getting excited and I want to join the party and I missed out on these gates, right? If you miss out on these gains, then that's not really a good excuse, okay? So we often see this happen in um, the equity markets or crypto markets uh, more often, which is almost a month-to-month -month thing because here's the thing. Crypto has a crazy amount of volatility. So when you have this kind of whipsaw, huge movements up and down, what typically happens is you have either buyer's remorse or seller's remorse, right? You'll have seller's remorse right here um, because you sold and price went up, or you'll have buyer's remorse up here and then price went down here. But it doesn't matter because here's the thing. If you believe in these assets for the long term and you didn't buy down here, that means that there was no reason for you to buy anyway, okay? So yesterday, what I looked up was, why is it that some of these assets bounced here? Well, what happened was in the 2020 end of year accumulation range that we had back here, so for example, compound, we actually came back and retested those highs as support right here, as you could see, right? So this was all previous resistance, resistance now turned into support. And in this area, there was actually a lot of selling that happened with some negative funding and that pushed price up, okay? Because effectively what happens is when you get a whole lot of people selling down here and shorting, right? You just need a little bit of momentum to the market and then prices just start rocketing. There's really no huge fundamental news that came out about compound that made it rocket so much, okay? And if that was the case, right? Um, you know, SNX in the same breath, it did a pretty massive movement itself. There's really no fundamental news about SNX either. 
right? That changed his whole project and business model and took it out from this, you know, big bearish trend to a now bullish trend, a potentially bullish trend. But what I would posit to you is, what if that these are movements within a market that are still within a downtrend? Now, again, I'm not trying to be overly bearish or anything, but what if it is? If any of you have been around since 2018, you remember that in a bear market, movements like these massive ones were not out of the question. They would actually happen once a month or once every few months in many random assets. I remember things like Tron and I see, um, what was it called? Icon and um, what was it called? Uh, XRP, all these different assets just randomly pumping here and there to be up, you know, hundred percent within the span of like two or three days. Okay. So just kind of be patient with, with movements like this. If you feel like you missed it, then, then look around the market and ask yourself, okay, if I miss this movement, and if you really believe that the market itself is going to be, be breaking out further, then where should I be looking next? Okay. Where should you be looking next? Well, I'm a big fan of fundamentals in terms of alpha. Now, alpha moved off a whole lot, but it's not up as much as compound or SNX over the last several days. It's still up a lot, but not significantly, right? That's one. Rune is another one, okay? Rune is barely off the lows. Again, Rune has solid fundamentals, right? But here's the thing, right? With Rune or alpha or some of these other assets, okay, some of them, have their accumulation range way down here. So all these gains that have been made up, um, Compound and SNX had retested their lows or rather their accumulation pattern from 2020, as you can read down here, but Rune is pretty far. So the question is, well, will Rune go down all the way here? That's a pretty steep drop. Maybe it gets down there, maybe it doesn't. But if you have the fundamental belief that the market has bottom, then just pick your flavor of what's your other favorite asset that you think has not lifted off the low so much. And there you can dive back in, right? Rune is a pretty solid asset. In my opinion, sushi is as well. I'm a big fan of sushi. Okay. Um, you know, I personally think still that sushi is going to come somewhere down here, but again, that's my fundamental belief. All right. If I see a turnaround in the market and I see that the whole market is breaking through key resistance levels, then I'm wrong, right? Obviously, that means that maybe we aren't heading down further. Uh, we aren't still in the middle of you know, a bear trend or a bear market, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't even have to be a label attached to it, okay? But if you believe fundamentally that there might be another leg to the downside, then you don't need to worry about these movements in here, right? Um, another asset that I'm following closely, CRV, okay? Uh, these are all fundamentally very, very good assets, all right? There's, there's, you know, if you're looking at it from the perspective of where's the local high to where we are right now, CRV is still down 56%, all right? Or even FTT, big fan of FTT. How much is FTT down from its high up here? FTT is still down 52, 53%. So you can see that some of these assets are down quite a bit from their all-time highs. So again, are you getting excited because simply the market as a whole is moving? Or is it that you really think you, you made a mistake or you wanted to get back in down here and you've missed the opportunity and you're just FOMOing in? You know, these are fundamental questions to ask yourself, okay? So anyway, if we go back to BTC, you know, the, the one thing that I've stated, um, uh, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on um, the advantage side of our community is um, one of my um, core opinions right now is I, I still think we're kind of in the middle of a bear trend. I know we're seeing these pops in the market, but, you know, a few days of upside movement like this, just like we had, you know, big pops like this right here. If y'all remember, right. I mean, we had this huge sell-off. We were down almost 64, 65% in many assets uh, in the matter of like two weeks. And then from this low, you know, these assets took off 
in some cases they took off like 80, 100, 150% to the upside when they popped up big. But after that, we just resumed to the downside because the buying activity is just not there, right? Some of that is also indicated by volumes, okay? If you actually look at the volumes across the board, whether it's for BTC, which as you can see, clearly declining volume, right? Um, and this is Binance. So let me see if I can open up a different chart. Um, let me see over here. Coinbase. Here's Coinbase, right? This is spot volume. Again, spot volume on a complete just cliff um, decline, right? Just completely drops off a cliff um, after you had this huge amount of selling, okay? And technically, volumes were already peaking off like right around this area right here. Okay, and then they just started to drop off, drop off, selling picked up, buying dropped off, selling picked up, buying dropped off. So what does that tell us? Well, we know that when this kind of movement happens in volume, right? And we know that when open interest like this falls off a cliff and we know when Bitcoin CVD, which is the cumulative volume Delta is still declining, we should be weary of the market. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you're not going to have big altcoin movements like this. It's totally fine to be, you know, playing those movements. But just know that there's nothing new about this market that hasn't been done before in any other financial market or even crypto markets. Now, I will say that one thing that I'm a big fan of is I like seeing good assets turn around first. Okay, so for example, you know, here's something that I recollect from last year when we had that big, you know, drawdown in the summertime. Okay, Theta, I remember, okay, in this area, this was the DeFi summer, you know, drop off, but Theta was the one that started to really lead us out of the previous, you know, market, the quote unquote bear market of last summer. And then just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because if you look at this movement in comparison to this, oops, in comparison to this, right, there's not really a whole lot to worry about. So if you are bullish on DeFi, bullish on NFTs, bullish on some of these assets that, you know, are right now discounted, just remember that you might be getting a really good price. Now, I'm not telling you to buy. This is not an opinion to, to, you know, go pick up these DeFi assets. This is just um, non-investment advice of how I'm looking at the market, right? Now, it is entirely possible that maybe we've had such a huge run in the market over the last one year, because this is what we've done in the last year. And this was, by the way, common for Bitcoin and Ethereum and Theta and Solana, Matic, anything you name it went up this much or more, right? So what if we're coming off those highs and it just takes a long time to come off those highs? It takes a long time to distribute, um, you know, within the, within the uh, uh, heaviness of selling, you'll have big pops in the market because there's going to be some people who think, oh, well, theta is undervalued here, but there's just so much selling pressure that theta or any of these assets cannot get past key resistance levels maybe that's also the case, right? So you have to square off on both sides and understand that while you may be thinking that these assets may have further upside, we're also coming off a pretty massive bull market over the last year, okay? So it is possible that we, we might come down further. But again, if you have the fundamental belief that say Axie Infinity, which is obviously kicking ass, right? I mean, it's up basically from these lows down here uh, about six or eight days ago, right? It's up 300%. You know, if, if something is up 300% like that, you know, something big is happening within this space right here. So question is, you know, if you go to CoinGecko, right? And you look up what's happening in Axie Infinity, okay? <clears throat> First of all, Axie is only a $740 million market cap. There's so many other garbage assets out there that are worth way more than Axie. Now, I'm actually a big fan of Axie, and I've posted a lot about it for our Advantage members uh, from you know the, the past couple of months. 
I didn't get into it, but it doesn't mean that just because something has taken off this much that I'm not a fan of it anymore. This is typically what happens with a lot of people is when something goes up this much, they think that, well, I can't get in now because it's gone up so much. See, that's the exact opposite of how you should be thinking, which is if something is going up this much, right? Maybe you should look into it, especially an asset like Axie Infinity, which is, you know, in my opinion, borderline one of the, the best assets that are out there that's doing something very unique in um, the, the gaming, the metaverse space, right? So you got to look into it and ask yourself, well, if I didn't like Axie at $4, why am I liking it at 14 Or if you did like Axie at 4 why are you still not liking it at 14 Right? Because that's how you have to look at the market. Is don't worry about the price that's happened here. If you really believe in this asset and you think that three months, six months, one year from now, Axie will be worth more, then the question to you is, why are you not buying? Right? Why did you not buy here? It is simply that you're getting excited up here. Okay. All questions to be able to ask yourself and, and bring your uh, emotions back down to earth. Because what will happen over the last, uh, what's happened over the last several days and what will continue to happen over the next few days is that a lot of these assets are going to pump a decent amount. Okay. Whether it's Solana or Ban, Rune, whatever right? They're going to pump and they're going to catch you uh, in a moment of excitement and you're going to lever up or you're going to buy in at the you know tippy top, if you will, or the local tippy top when there's super um, amounts of excitement. And then once price drops five, 10%, you're going to feel that panic to want to sell. And you're going to ask yourself, shit, did I buy the top? You know, what if this thing is going to come down? What if we're going to be in a further bear market? All these emotions are going to come into your mind, okay? So before you pull the trigger, ask yourself that, are you buying into the middle of bear market? Are you um, simply buying because there's a lot of excitement in the market? Are you chasing these assets because they're up a lot, okay? And it's okay to want to buy at this level. And if it goes down further, you buy lower. And if it goes down further, you buy lower. If you are that kind of dollar cost averaging buyer um, and you're not really concerned about, say, the local price movements of Alchemix, or you think that, you know, say something like Solana is still undervalued at $36, $37, then that's okay. Then you are probably the better buyer out here. Because if you don't care about the local movements of price action, then it's totally fine. Okay, it's totally okay for you to want to be a buyer at 36, a buyer at 31, a buyer at 25, 20, 15, whatever. But just know that, you know, this market doesn't necessarily have to break up. Okay, this kind of excitement, in my opinion, this is the kind of noise that I've typically found that happens within bear trends. Now, again, I'm not saying I'm super confident. I'm not saying that you know, this has to resolve lower, but when I see um, big excitable movements, like, you know, these, like in the middle of a large downtrend, which by the way, this is unquestionably a large downtrend, whether it's a Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, any asset, you name it. Okay. All you have to do is look at the weekly or the monthly chart. I mean, we're continuously on a decline, right? Uh, especially Ethereum, if you look at the weekly, still doesn't really look that great. If you look at the monthly, still doesn't really look that great. So all these things should warn you and tell you that, okay, well, maybe I am getting a little bit too excited, right? Maybe if I do buy, maybe size down, maybe don't lever up too much. Maybe be prepared just in case the price drops, you can have some um, more cash to buy lower. Okay, I'm trying to give you guys an understanding of how to be prepared for anything in the market, because if you're buying now, right, and you have the fundamental belief that the market has to go up, and if it doesn't, you're going to be trapped in a very, very bad position, right? Because if the market starts coming down, what's your escape plan, right? Do you have one? Do you know where to get out of the market? Um, if so, how much are you willing to lose in the market? Right. 
because the way I'm looking at it is if we stay patient for a while, and, and I believe that if the market grinds down further, the buying activity that we're seeing over the last couple of days, <clears throat> that should wear out, right? Like typically in the, the, way, the point at which bear markets turn into bull markets is when the entire market is really quiet, right? It's very silent. Um, people don't really know if they want to be bullish or if they want to um, continue to be bored to death by the bear market. That's typically how I've seen bear markets turn into bull because they're very, very um, quiet. And I don't think this is quiet. I think it's very noisy. I think there's a lot of noise happening right now. So I'm just trying to be patient, right? I, I am finding level to level trades here and there, and I'm letting my advantage members know that. But me personally, I'm still very, very cautious of the market. Okay. And by the way, it's okay to be cautious because guess what, right? After such a huge decline, you know, you, you, you haven't really done a whole lot. Okay. Like the point at which one should really start to get noticeably excited or, or want to know that maybe the market is turning around is in my opinion, like price at least has to get above here or bef b above this support right here. I know that's really far away. And you're going to say, well, what the hell? Like, you know, you're telling me that I have to wait for this entire movement to pass, wait for price to break above here, ignore all this, and then get excited here? Uh, yeah, that's what, what it takes, okay? That's what it takes because in bear markets, okay, so let me get rid of this. In bear markets, for a market to turn around and show you that it's flipping from bear to potentially bull is when it reclaimed when it reclaimed significant resistance levels significant ones right because here for example this could really just be another lower high but you can't put in a lower high once this price breaks above this area right once it breaks above this area right here oops once it breaks above this area right here you've broken through this area that cap price you've broken through this area that was held as support so there's not really a whole lot of arguments left right and especially once price gets up here the i bet you the weekly and the monthly will look a whole lot better all right and again this is just for the cautious buyer out there the one that wants to be careful in the market and not get trapped um like people did in 2018 but it's also i know I know it's entirely possible that this is the bottom down here, right? And we could start heading up from here. I understand that. I'm giving you guys both sides of the opinion because I don't want anybody to think that, oh, well, you know, this guy is way too bearish or he's way too bullish. You know, I know exactly what I'm doing with my money. Okay. And I'm giving you guys understanding a peek into my mind of how I go about that thinking, how I've lasted, you know, these markets for 11 to 12 years in the US equity space, in the commodity space, and now crypto, right? Because doing this for 12 or 13 years, you come to learn a thing or two, not just about how charts are read, but you learn a thing or two about markets, their rhythmic nature, about how human psychology works, how markets tend to give you these very unique opportunities to buy and sell, but most people don't take them. Or when markets really are able to trap a lot of people right into the area where you should not be getting trapped, but most people typically do. All these things I relate to you guys because I want to pass on some of the, the things that I've learned from these markets over the years, right? And it helps because here's the thing, a lot of people, I bet you right now, a lot of people are very frustrated with this market. And I'm almost certain that a majority of people who made this money on the way up, I'm almost confident that they've lost it all in the last several months. It took one year for this massive movement to happen. I'm sure people made a ton of money, but I bet you in the last month and a half, this movement probably broke a lot of people. And it's really, really sad to see because people just don't know how to change and operate from a market that was extremely bullish right? This market was extremely bullish and then it flipped 
really quickly to neutral to bearish to just you know downright um vicious in this area and people don't know how to trade how to change up their strategies how to size down how to utilize you know um less size all these things people make mistakes on and they keep making those mistakes and those mistakes compound and then eventually you're down basically your entire profit margin that you made in the bull market back here um, and more than likely, you may have lost everything, sadly. Okay, so I'm just trying to do my best to help y'all, um, especially even on my Twitter feed, right? Like I post a lot of really great stuff um, to show y'all, you know, what I'm paying attention to, what I'm reading, what my thoughts are on the market, right? What kind of news am I watching? All this stuff is uh, visible on my Twitter feed. You can find me here at uh, the underscore alpha traits. Okay, or hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Come join our Advantage membership. The link is below in the description. All right, until then, folks, take care. Be safe in the market. You know my thoughts in the market, right? Um, yeah, that's it. Cheers, everybody.